Hi right, everybody, I want to talk real briefly about where am I at with the gravity driven generator, the gravity driven electric generator. You ignore the, the cooler down in there and this weird looking aluminum plate sitting on the on the project. It's got nothing to do with this project. Yes, I had to dismantle this project because the winding wheel gave up the ghost after just one load of three or four hundred pounds. It just couldn't take it. It used to be mounted right there. Now, I never intended, it was a bicycle wheel, by the way. I never intended the bicycle wheel to be the final design. I was hoping that I could just collect enough data so I could find out whether or not the gear ratio was producing the, the, the correct amount of um, revolutions and torque and everything needed to generate electricity from the generator that you see back there. Okay. Well, it didn't last. The wheel gave up the ghost right away. So I had to take some time, do some more research, and really spend some time figuring this whole thing out. And what I'm going to use is uh, what's called a colliery wheel, C-O-L-L-I-E-R-Y. Now that comes from old school deep coal mining out of England about 100 years ago. They don't do that anymore. But the wheel itself is a really good design that's going to work for this project. Okay, The structure itself that's going to hold the wheel is probably going to change, so this may go away. The outside... Uh, the old power rack will probably stay as long as I can determine that it's, that it's going to still stay solid, which looks like it's okay for now. Okay. I don't remember what videos I ran, but this little structure right here with, uh, is made of U-channel. Okay. It's got a, a bearing on this side and a bearing on the other side. And the shaft, that shaft, used to run right through there. And then uh, some Olympic weights I used temporarily to put down there. But the reason why this needed to be necessary is because the shaft would fluctuate and bend under load. So this structure actually kept the shaft from bending. Okay, And that's absolutely necessary for the longevity of things like chains and everything else. Okay, So that's where I'm at. I'm um, going to design a miniature version, a modified miniature version of the colliery wheel. You can Google that if you want to know what a colliery wheel is. Look it up. And, you know, the other thing too, guys, I had to take about a year to really get my TIG welding skills up because I'm going to need to weld this, weld this wheel. So last year I didn't have those skills. Um, now I have enough. I'm not going to say I'm a, I'm a professional at it, but I have enough skills in TIG welding now to make this happen. And, you know, you're, you're not going to find people who are going to, are going to be willing to fabricate an old, old school colliery wheel nowadays. It just isn't going to happen. And if they do fabricate it for you, they're going to charge you a buku bucks. So I'm not even going to go down that road. I've been doing this long enough now with this project and other projects to know that sometimes you want something done right. You just got to do it yourself. And, and that's, that's what's going to have to happen here. So that's where I'm at with the project. The other thing that's going to change besides the winding wheel itself is I'm going to have to go to what's called double sprockets. Okay, because I'm already a little bit concerned about the load limit of the chain. I mean, I know the specs pretty well. And these chains will be borderline if one's being used. After a while, they could break. So I'm going to go with the two sprocket system, double sprockets and just disperse the load across two sprockets. This way I don't have to worry about components breaking. And some of you may be asking, why would I, why would I just go with a bigger, thicker chain? And that has a lot, lot to do with the, uh, the gear ratios. The minute you go with a bigger sprocket, uh, you, all your gear ratios change. And I'd have to go with huge sprockets to make it work, and that's just not practical. Okay. So that's where I'm at, guys. Um, you know, I still have a passion for this. And I want to thank the gentleman that sent me the email asking about this project. I'm not going to mention his name on YouTube because, you know, I'm very careful about that kind of stuff. Uh, but he knows who he is. I just want to say thank you very much for helping to get me re-inspired and re reinvigorated towards this project. Um, so that's where I'm at. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when I'm going to start this up, um, get the design going and get the welding going. But I think I'm going to spend a little money on a new camera and have... You know, at least do some videos from time to time so you guys can follow along with what's going on with this project. And and so, um, you know, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do because it makes a difference for me. Give me give me the thumbs up because it really it really matters. You know, I mean, just like this gentleman that sent me an email asking about this project, 
you know, it got me re-inspired. So, you know, do that, and I and uh, and I'm just hoping that this project is going to go a long way. You know, even if I never make a dime off this project, I'm going to enjoy this project myself. I mean, if all it ever does is run for me, my personal use, and I'm charging batteries with it, or I'm I'm running uh, my lights at night, or or whatever, um, that's just you know, <laughs> that, that's the fun part, right? Making this stuff and then using it. So. I still see this as an emergency generator, um, and we'll just see if it could go any further than that once I get things up and running again. All right, guys, I thank you very much for watching the, 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 the video here, and as soon as I have something more to show you, you know I'll get back to you. All right, take care.